Ester hydrolysis, also known as saponification, is basically the reaction in which we transform an ester reactant into a carboxylic acid product. Now, ester hydrolysis is essentially the reverse of the Fischer esterification process. Recall that in Fischer esterification, we transform a carboxylic acid into an ester product, and in this case, we go in reverse. So, ester hydrolysis takes place either under basic conditions or under acidic conditions. And let's begin by discussing the reaction mechanism for ester hydrolysis under basic conditions. So, under basic conditions, we basically have our addition elimination reaction taking place. So, in step number one, we have the hydroxide that acts as our Lewis base, as the nucleophile reacting with our ester, the Lewis acid. So, we form a bond between the oxygen and the carbon, and we displace this pi bond and place the electrons onto this oxygen. So, we form a tetrahedral intermediate ion that contains a negative charge on this oxygen. And because we are under basic conditions, this reforms our pi bond and eliminates this alkoxide group. So, reaction number one is the addition, and reaction number two is our elimination reaction. So, we produce this molecule here, which is basically our intermediate carboxylic acid, as well as this alkoxide. And because we are under basic conditions, this will not be the final product. In step number three, this alkoxide will grab and deprotonate this H off of our oxygen, forming a resonance stabilized intermediate known as the carboxylate anion. And we also form this alcohol molecule. Now, to actually form the final carboxylic acid product from this carboxylate ion, we have to react it with our hydronium. So, we add an acid to hydronium, and what happens is this electron, this pair of electron, basically grabs an H atom off of our hydronium, and we form the final product, our carboxylic acid, as well as our water. So, in the final step, we can imagine that this grabs an H, kicking off the, these two electrons onto our oxygen, forming the water, as well as our carboxylic acid. So, we see that under base conditions for our ester hydrolysis, we transform an ester into the final product, our carboxylic acid. But, in the Fischer esterification, we transform our carboxylic acid into our ester. So, going this way, we have ester hydrolysis going in reverse, we have the Fischer esterification under basic conditions. Now, an important point must be made about the base uh, condition for ester hydrolysis. So, this is not a base catalyzed reaction. The base does not act as a catalyst, and that means it is not regenerated at the end. So, note that this is not a base catalyzed reaction. This means that the hydroxide is not regenerated at the last step, in the last step of our reaction. So, in this particular case, under basic conditions, the base, the hydroxide, does not act as a catalyst. Now, what about acidic conditions? What happens if we have, for example, hydronium in the presence of water? So, in step number one, water is not a strong enough nucleophile and it cannot simply attack this carbon because this is not strong enough Lewis acid. So, to transform this molecule, our ester, into a strong Lewis acid, we have to protonate the oxygen of this particular carbon-oxygen double bond. So, step number one is a protonation step in which this hydronium loses an H atom and it's gained by this oxygen to form this protonated ester molecule that is resonance stabilized. 
Now, in step number two, because we now have a strong Lewis acid, this strong Lewis acid can react with the water, our relatively weak nucleophile, the Lewis base. And so these two electrons now attack this carbon, forming this tetrahedral intermediate that now contains a positive charge on this oxygen. So notice the resemblance to this reaction here in the base catalyzed, the tetrahedral intermediate contain a negative charge on the oxygen, but under acidic conditions, the tetrahedral intermediate contains a positive charge on this oxygen. So in the next step, in step number three, we have to deprotonate this H atom. So we have to deprotonate our oxygen because it contains a positive charge, which is a most destabilizing effect. Fact. So in step number three, a water molecule grabs an H, deprotonates this oxygen, forming this tetrahedral intermediate that no longer contains a positive charge on our oxygen. We also form this hydronium. And in step number four, this same hydronium will act to protonate this oxygen of this alkoxide, transforming this poor leaving group into a much better leaving group our alcohol. So once we create this good leaving group, this oxygen can close up a pi bond, can form a pi bond and kick off this good leaving group. So we form our alcohol as well as this protonated carboxylic acid. And in the final step, a water molecule takes off the H off of this oxygen, forming the final product, our carboxylic acid as well as our hydrogen molecule. So we see that under acidic or basic conditions, we can basically take our ester and transform the ester into a carboxylic acid. And this reaction is known as ester hydrolysis or saponification. So what exactly can we conclude about this reaction? So ester hydrolysis is basically the reverse of Fischer esterification. In Fischer esterification, we form the final product, the ester from the carboxylic acid. So we, we go basically in reverse. But in our ester hydrolysis, we basically want to form the carboxylic acid from our ester molecule. And we can form this either on the base under basic or under acidic conditions. Now, when we have excess water in our mixture, we know by Le Chatelier principle, when we have a lot of water, we will tend to produce a lot of our carboxylic acid. However, if we have excess alcohol, by Le Chatelier principle, when we have excess alcohol, we will go in reverse and we will form our ester from the carboxylic acid. So uh, when we have excess water, we have a lot of the carboxylic acid present at equilibrium. However, when we have excess alcohol, we're going to have a lot of the ester present at equilibrium. And this comes from Le Chatelier's principle.